I think you touched on some really, really important things there, and that's how many chronic diseases are related to what we eat. And one of the struggles I find is how do we talk to and connect people to making these changes in their diet? Lots of people say they would rather take their medication than make changes in, in their diet. And lots of people just don't think it really matters. Do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, I actually have a lot of thoughts about that. I, I'm, number one is, is that if, if you, you know, feel like you're, you're doing okay, you're healthy, maybe you're not overweight, uh, maybe you are and you've been frustrated, um, but maybe you don't have any serious conditions, struggles, or you, know, you don't have cancer or, or, or heart disease that you know of, but you know, many people are in that boat. And what happens is, is that one day they think they're fine and the next day they find out they've got cancer um, or they have a massive heart attack. And, you know, for example, with, you know, people that have um, heart disease, 25% of the time, their first symptom is sudden death. Now that's a terrible symptom to have for your first symptom of heart disease. And, you, you, uh, you know, I mean, I lost my sister to cancer two years ago, which she got uh, breast cancer back in 2006, long before I knew anything about this. And, you know, she had followed a pretty standard American diet, which is just awful. Um, you know, we are, we, the United States exemplifies the worst possible diet uh, pretty much on the planet, at least as far as developed nations go, but probably almost all nations. Um, and, you know, I have a sister-in-law that developed cancer here, uh, breast cancer, two years ago. A uh, dreadful situation. Um, and, you know, I could go on and on, just in my own family. But my, the point is, is that you have to, it's like a heart attack or a stroke or cancer. We cannot fix these problems once you have them. There's really not very good treatment for any of these things, including cancers, um, but prevention is key. And you prevent these disorders, these diseases, these conditions through an ancestral diet, through, which means nutrient dense foods and lack of toxic foods. And let me put this in a, in a nutshell. You know, processed food is really made up of four things. It's refined wheat flour, added sugars, polyunsaturated vegetable oils, and trans fats. And you put those four things together and you can make, in the United States, 600,000 different food items. And these foods are nutrient deficient, meaning they don't have hardly any uh, vitamins or minerals. Um, and then there's the whole toxic uh, side of this. And so, um, you know, you, you put those together and you have created the perfect recipe for metabolic disaster. And if I eat that diet, maybe I get arthritis and then I have a heart attack. And maybe if some of you eat that diet, maybe you get cancer or have a stroke. Um, so we all react differently to the same uh, you know, westernized diet, these same processed foods, we all have um, genetic susceptibilities, but genes don't drive this all this disease. Genes load the gun, but environment pulls the trigger, and that environment is 99 plus percent your diet, in my opinion. I hope that's a helps to summarize what you were looking for, Susan. But yeah, you tell me that, where 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 I'm missing. That's a fabulous summary. And I think the only other point I'd like you to elaborate on is how long does it take for this to happen? Because we eat this diet for 20 or 30 years and we don't think anything's going wrong. You know, what's the time frame for these diseases to um, sort of evolve and present themselves? 
That is a fabulous question, and I'm glad you, you, you asked that. So here's the thing. In most westernized nations, uh, the bowl, I think, oh, I don't have data on this, but in, in essence, I mean, we're born one day, and we begin to very soon, if not immediately, begin to consume processed foods. And those processed foods look like, for example, formula which Sally Fallon Morell of the Weston A. Price Foundation tells us is the most you know, processed, nutrient deficient, dangerous food on the planet. We begin to, we feed our kids this right away. Now, so in terms of getting sick and based on the type of disorder that you will get, it depends uh, dramatically on what disorder. So we, if you are consuming lots of vegetable oils and sugar, you know, processed foods, like, like baby food, you know, I mean, infant formula, for example, and then, the, and, then the, and then the infant who becomes the child is now consuming a typical westernized diet with a bunch of seed oils and, you know, packaged, processed, man-made foods. Okay, they become nutrient deficient and all this toxicity begins to build up. Now, the z disorders like metabolic syndrome where you begin to have you begin to generally you're gaining visceral fat you're becoming insulin resistant um, maybe your blood sugars are already starting to go up um, you, you know you're gaining weight overall your liver's getting sick all those things can happen in a matter of days weeks easily within months um, so those disorders happen very rapidly so i i mean i saw for example there was, um, there was a published paper on a child that was four years old, had metabolic syndrome and type two diabetes in Canada, I believe it was, and another reports of a three-year-old, whereas like when I was in medical school in the 80s, type two diabetes was reserved for people that were adults. Right, Susan? I mean, that's the way it has been. Um, so now, um, so cancer actually can hit very quickly. I mean, it's hitting children, obviously, you know, very, very young ages with these kinds of diets. Um, and then, but, and then a lot of these diseases, like, for example, heart disease, uh, strokes, uh, age-related macular degeneration, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, most of these diseases have an incubation period, we call it, um, of decades. And so if a, if a, if a, baby is born, begins to consume processed foods, and then continues that into childhood and adulthood, maybe he's 40 or 50 or 60 years old before he has the big heart attack, right? And that's the incubation period for these, for a lot of these chronic diseases. It takes a long time to get there. And this is exactly the way age-related macular degeneration is. And Alzheimer's is even longer, typically. But the, but, you know, so it depends you know, it all depends on how much processed food you're getting, um, you know, a little bit about your lifestyle and then which disease that you eventually get uh, will depend on how long you consume that essentially. But let's face it, the, the uh, it's today chronic disease in the United States affects 48% of adults um, so literally half of the country has a chronic uh, degenerative or metabolic disease condition. Um, and I think if you, and, and then there's another, I think it's 28% have multiple chronic conditions. Like they have known heart disease, um, uh, obesity, uh, um, type two diabetes, things like that. They're dealing with multiple of these diseases. Uh, um, so, uh, but again, what's really, really important to understand is that if you look at all of the people consuming native traditional diets, and there's a number of these studies that have been extraordinarily well done. Weston Price did this in the 1930s with populations all over the world five continents, hundreds of tribes and villages. And there's been, you know, more recent um, studies of populations like the Maasai in Kenya and Tanzania, um, the uh, Tokelauans 
the um, population of Tupacenta, Papua New Guinea, um, the uh, Chamane of Bolivia. These are populations that are still consuming native traditional diets. And what I want to tell you, tell the audience is that they don't get any of these diseases. They've been proven not to, they don't get heart disease. They're not getting cancers. They're not getting strokes. They're not getting metabolic syndrome. They have no obesity, uh, virtually almost no overweight. They are fantastically healthy populations. And there's more of them than what I just listed. But what do they not have? And what they don't have in their diets is processed foods. They don't have uh, refined wheat flour, sugars, trans fats, and they certainly do not have vegetable oils. None of these populations would have ever had that. And I can talk about the history of vegetable oils if you want me to, Susan, but um, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Just look at the populations that are fabulously healthy. And these are the things that you see all over the world that they don't have in their diet. And I think that's such an interesting point because um, Western A. Price, um, New Zealand Maori were one of the um, groups that he investigated, weren't they? And, yes. you know, and we're seeing them so, and Pacific Islanders as well, so overrepresented in our health statistics since they started consuming this, this Western diet that you've just described. Um, and it's not really, it's not really their fault because our government prescribes it, our GPs prescribe it, our dietitians prescribe it, and people say I'm eating healthy. And you know, there's a lot of work to do to explain to people that that is not actually healthy. Right, and there's no reason. I mean, there's. It's no wonder that people are so confused because. Uh, e even if they listen to the, the, what Sally Fallon calls the diet dictocrats, um, like from the Harvard School of Public Health and Tufts University uh, Nutrition Department and Mayo Clinic Nutrition Department, um, those organizations recommend these vegetable oils and they, uh, they recommend them for one reason only, and it's the fact that they they make the total cholesterol and the LDL cholesterol go down. Um, but, you know, I, uh, I don't have this, um, I don't have uh, an actual reference for this, but I know Nina Teicholz has talked about the fact that these organizations, some of them are being heavily funded by big food manufacturers and even by vegetable oil manufacturers. And she talked about this um, even for Harvard University School of Public Health. And so they're conflicted because they're being funded to you know, produce studies that show that vegetable oils, for example, are healthy. And why are they healthy? And what they're gonna tell you is, is they drive your LDL cholesterol down. And that is indeed true. And that is not favorable, um, which we can get into that too, but that's not beneficial mm. in my opinion for anyone. 